Hey, this is Ben from Tattoo Now TV. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us, all you folks out there on the internet. Uh, we've got a great show for you. Uh, Ivana will be here. She is just finishing up a tattoo, so uh, we'll get her in here as soon as we can. She's a hard-working woman. Uh, we'll be talking with Nick Baxter, who is on Skype now, waiting for us to talk with him. Uh, Guy Aitchison will be with us as well. We'll be going through uh, Tattoo of the Day. We'll tell you a little bit about uh, what's going on with Tattoo Now, news and events. I um, want to tell you a little bit about our sponsors. Uh, this show was brought to you by the Worldwide Tattoo Conference, which is going to be going on in Boston, June 4th and 5th. Nick will be there, along with Jeff Gogway, Nico Hurtado, uh, Guy Ichison, Alex DePasse, and Bob Tyrell. It's also brought to you by Tattoo Now. Uh, who made all of this possible. They do um, websites and mobile apps for tattoo artists. They are the ones who power this. Uh, Sullen, who printed our lovely shirts, which I will show you a little bit later. Um, we'll be giving one of those away to uh, folks that comment on our YouTube videos uh, or Instagram. If you have any great questions in the chat, maybe we'll throw you one there too. Uh, Sullen always does a great job printing. And if you want to buy some of their stuff, we have a promotion going on right now that if you enter Tattoo Now when you check out, you'll get 15% off. Ego Tattoo Machines, uh, made by a friend of the show uh, and past guest, Bez. You can uh, find out more about his new little ego and what he's got in the works at uh, TattooMachinesNow.com. Uh, they have their own website coming up soon. Uh, Pulse Tattoo Supply at PulseTattoo.com. They've got a brand new website. Uh, everything you need for your tattooing needs, they are there. Uh, Neotat, uh, makers of great tattoo machines. You should check them out at neotat.com. All right, Nick. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked you before um, because it didn't come through on this end. As far as trying to get a, a larger client base, do you feel it's better to work on your craft or do you feel like you should go out and hit the circuit, you know, the convention circuit hard and try to get in magazines? Which is a, which is a better focus, do you think? I think a person, a tattooer could choose their focus based on direction they kind of want their career to go in. Um, uh, luckily, in, in 2013, um, great work still, still sells itself and, uh, you know, authentic and unique original will eventually come to you as long as you get the word out. Um, and you don't need to do a lot of traveling and there's, there are plenty of artists who have built up, built up a lot of art tell through um, just through the word of mouth and the simple fact that their work is undeniably original and unique and compelling and powerful. So there's that. But you know, there, there's also the type of people who, the type of tattooers who love attention and um, love the sort of like publicity and fame aspects of the profession, which there's a it's wrong with being that way. If, if if someone uh, wants to be that way, that's fine. So, I mean, getting a lot of notoriety and recognition through publications and online and could be the way to go for someone like that. But there's, you still have to, at the end of the day, be putting out quality work or you won't get a repeat clientele and you'll constantly be on this, like, hamster wheel of, like, you know, you tattoo someone once and then... It doesn't, you know, they don't end up being very happy with either the tattoo or the experience, and they won't come back, and then you constantly just have to get on the wheel again and get the next thing in the door. So um, the better your work is, the more repeat clientele you'll have, and you won't necessarily need to chase all of the exposure, but it's there if you want it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's sort of like a, an, an individual preference. Right on. I think that's that was a pretty good answer. I think the, I think they'll enjoy that one. Um, Another one from the chat room is uh, they want to know how an artist can overcome doubts in their work and uh, get more confidence 
uh, in their tattooing? How to overcome doubt, you said? Yeah, like, I'm doubt? assuming personal doubt, you know, in your work. Uh, how do you gain confidence that you're, you know, that you're doing, that you're doing well? You know? Or is it always there? I mean, do you always doubt? Is the self, self-doubt always part of it? I think a percentage of the tattooing experience is always self-doubt, but um, it should be in a healthy ratio to confidence. So if someone's having a majority of doubt and a, a minority of confidence, then, uh, yeah, that's a problem. Uh, your work's going to suffer, and... Uh, you may want to stick to the basics and not try anything uh, in a slight bit experimental if you don't have the confidence to pull it off because really confidence is everything. It's like the magic ingredient. Um, it's something that can't be quantified. It can't be necessarily measured or charted physically or anything. It's just it's this magical sense of you know you can do it and then or you will it into being. So, um, as far as how to tell someone how to get that, I, I mean, that's maybe way too deep into psychology and personal counseling, you know, that maybe <laughs> I could offer, but, um, but some self doubt should maybe always be there as a checks and balances to make sure you go off the deep end and thinking you can, like, do anything and be immortal and, you know, you start ruining people's skin thinking you're the best. That's uh, right on. Um, so I have another question here. Uh, it says, how, how do you start to make the move from tattooing what your clients bring to you and what, what their ideas are and to tattooing what you want to be able to tattoo and your ideas? How, how do you make that transition? Um, I, I haven't really made that transition myself so it's hard for me to give a perspective on it because pretty much every single tattoo I do I ask I ask the person what they want or they start off the conversation by telling me what they want and then we engage in a sort of question and answer process and uh, getting to know one another one another's tastes and preferences a little bit and uh I mean, I think maybe in my whole career I've done one tattoo that I simply wanted to do and it didn't matter what the person wanted or what they liked or didn't like. But seriously, um, I, I kind of wonder if that's like a big mix of like people doing what they want because ultimately the client has to want it and you're, you're not like forcefully holding them down against their will. So even <laughs> if it does originate from your mind, I mean, the client still has to sign on to the experience and uh, be, be willing to put that image on their skin. So, um, I don't know, maybe for someone who's struggling with that, that's sort of like a false, that's like a red herring. It's like a false question to be asking. Um, maybe they should be asking, figuring out how to interact with their clients and maybe search their clients uh, a little better, maybe tune into their needs and wants and figure out which of those match up with their own or they can even want um, to sort of a question and answer process. I don't know. So you're saying, I mean, for you, it's always a collaboration. It's not, it's, it's always, it's, it's always a joint venture between you and the client. It's never just you. And I, I guess I can understand that because why would anyone want you to just go in and do whatever the hell you wanted to do on them? It's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. All right, so away from the kind of the uh, technical aspect here, and uh, you just recently went to Colombia. What was yeah. that? Uh, just for uh, for fun and vacation? I did a little bit of work down there. I did uh, some tattooing, and I taught uh, my holistic approach tattooing seminar. Um, slightly revised version of it, different, a little bit different than the one I do at the Worldwide Tattoo Conference um, because it had to be translated into Spanish uh, by, by my friend. So um, I kind of trimmed it down and kind of tailored it a little bit to the audience who I knew was going to be there. And uh, after I did that seminar, I had some time to uh, just 
relax and enjoy myself and went to the Amazon jungle and had some great adventures. I saw some uh, some pretty awesome pictures on the Instagram. It looked like it was a really beautiful place. Yeah, it's, inc- it's incredible. It's, it's pretty pretty life changing for a for a sheltered North American. Uh, anyone who kind of grew up as a sheltered child in the suburbs, maybe maybe should think about going to a truly wild place like the Amazon and really really get a taste of. Uh, what's real in life and maybe, you know, all the crazy experiences this world has to offer. I don't know. I think it's very, it's, 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 it's a very positive, uh, moving and inspiring thing. If anyone is able to get down there, I highly recommend it. Do you think, uh, you'll be doing some, uh, tattoos that were inspired by your trip? Do you think you're going to oh, absolutely. In- incorporate some of your experience? Yeah, I mean, in an uh, in an indirect way, I mean, I'm always doing that anyway. But um, as far as like the vast array of exotic and interesting flora and fauna that I experienced in, in the Amazon, um, that's most definitely going to show up in some tattoos, whether through something as simple as as a texture or a color scheme or something. But it's all it's all headed in that direction for sure. So, do you feel that you need to have a, know, a connection with your client, uh, like philosophically or politically, to, to tattoo them, uh, or is it some? Will you tattoo anybody, or do you do, do you try to uh, get people that are like-minded? I think when I have a client who's very like-minded, that presents the optimal tattooing experience for both of us. Um, however, it's not mandatory nor uh, exclusive. So um, there's times when I'm simply doing my job and uh, earning a paycheck, so, so to speak, and trying to have good customer service and leave the customer with a result they're happy with. Um, you know, and all, all, all the way to the other end of the section, or there's uh, like a deep philosophical connection and we're just on the same page and it's a really big, it, it could be exciting experience for, for artists and clients. So range of experiences that that I can, that, that I have had, that I am, am able to have and I just try to do what's best for the scenario. Uh, we've got a, a folks in the chat that want to know if you experience burnout from being in such high demand all the time. Uh, is it hard, is it hard to be so popular? Um, it is actually at times hard to be in high demand and, um, sort of do a constant dance with burnout. I sort of like try to make it my dance partner and not like my, my foe or, you know, or my enemy. Um, so it's just a constant checking in with yourself, you know, a constant, constant process of knowing yourself and learning yourself and uh, being, being being sensitive to what you're feeling and uh, also uh, being being uh, non-codependent and not you know, not a person who needs to say yes to please other people um, you know tattoos are a luxury item at the end of the day no one needs to be tattooed and if I say no or I simply don't have the time or energy then it's not to be taken as an insult by anybody um, it's not to be taken personally it's just it's just how it is and life goes on thank you for that um, can you tell us a little bit about your upcoming seminar at the Worldwide Tattoo Conference in June yeah so my seminar is called the holistic approach um, it centers around the philosophical concept of holism, which um, is sort of counter to maybe the mainstream philosophy that dominates, you know, most of our lives. Um, and so I get deep into some conceptual and some philosophical teachings, uh, and I try to relate this back into tattooing and teach 
teach wisdom through a foundational approach um, so that people can make their own discoveries and hopefully end up with lots of inspiration and an urge to experiment and push themselves rather than necessarily ending up with a bunch of very specific like tips to end up you know, exactly like my tattoo. So, um, so it's abstract and I, I, I try to take, take the attendees on a more mental journey I, I, I suppose, and uh, and then of course I mix in some some technique, but it's grounded in the philosophy of you know it's not meant. I'm not putting out there for everyone to imitate and copy me. I'm putting out the concept, and so I hope people take away the underlying concepts of what I'm saying. But it sounds it sounds uh, very uh, in depth and informative. I'm actually, I'm going to sit in on it. I want to I want to check it out. Um, thank you so much for dealing with this uh, technical issue. Um, is there anything you'd like to add on the end of this before we uh, before we let you go? Oh uh, yeah, sorry the video feed didn't work out. Um, I don't know. I guess I guess that's all I got. I had trouble saying spontaneously. <laughs> so I don't know, man. <laughs> well, hey, man, thank you so much for being with us, and uh, I'm looking forward You're to seeing, seeing you in Boston in June. Awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Nick. Miami to me is Hispanic culture, palm trees, Calle Ocho, Miami Beach. Artistically, creatively, it's amazing. I love my city. I love Miami. You know, I live and breathe, you know, 305. Uh, my name is uh, Cesar Morales. I'm the owner of A Thousand Virgins Tattoo Studio and A Thousand Virgins Tattoo Production. I grew up in Miami. I've been here since 1978. I've been in the tattoo industry now for almost 20 years. It'll definitely inspire you like no other place can. My name is Catherine Tattoo Baby Flores. I'm from Miami, Florida. Definitely no place like Miami. I mean, I, I've traveled everywhere, especially because of what I do when I go to a lot of tattoo conventions, but there's no place like home. I think of Art Basel, Wynwood, the art walls, um, everybody that comes from all over out of town and showcases, you know, some of the artwork here in our walls. I feel like other artists coming to Miami are going to be inspired from our ambition. Come to Miami, be inspired. We good? Hey, we're back. Hope you enjoyed the segment with Nick Baxter. We're back with Ivana. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah. Nice to, uh, nice to see you. You too. Um, so, for folks who aren't familiar with you, could you tell us where you're from and uh, how you started mm -hmm. tattooing? Uh, I'm from Slovakia and um, I started tattooing just after I finished school pretty much. My friend, she decided to open the tattoo shop. And she asked me whether I would like to try something like that. And I did, you know. I, I started to practice with my friends and on my family, and that's how I got into it. So no. pretty much just after school. I never did anything else except You've that. You've only tattooed? Only tattoo. That was just like really co-accident. It came to me, and I just, go, I just went for it. So are you completely mm. self-taught? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never had any formal training, nothing like that. So I was what? just drawing for fun um, since I was kid, pretty much, that's all. What was the first tattoo that you ever that you ever did? It was for uh, one girl, little ornamental thing. It took me maybe two hours to do, 
because I'm very precise, so I have to have exactly like how I wanted it. And uh, she went to Virpool the same night because I didn't know how to take care of it. And after like four days, she lost it all. And actually, oh, no. it looked like a branding. She just had like a little scar oh, there. Fell yeah, out. yeah. <laughs> but I remember the first tattoo. So, yeah. so just uh, mm. have you? Are you still in contact with this girl? No, have you no, seen no. it since? No? no, I didn't. I'm curious to see what it would look like. Yeah. So your tattoo uh, tattoo style is very uh, it's graphic, illustrative mm. style. Um, how did you come about? that you okay my right my out the gate like that or? no my style is actually constantly changing even mm -hmm. till now i'm tattooing for i don't know maybe like 12 years maybe even more but it's it's always changing it's it could be slightly changes now lately because i'm kind of have already like my style right. but i started uh, to do for the first few years just black and gray actually i, I enjoy black and gray a lot which is completely different i know it's what you, this is what you do yeah it's you know. completely different yeah and i was doing lots of black work and then I started to do a little bit shading, and then I uh, I was attracted more and more to color. So I was started. Was there any to event that uh, that changed your mind about mm. black and gray? Uh, mm. Now you just wanted to start blasting in some color. Not as such, but I, w I was uh, I like all different styles, and I always want to experiment because I don't want to stick only to one thing. So it's for me it was just like a natural process, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Mm. So. Uh, the tattoos you're doing now, are they mm -hmm. your designs or do people bring them to you? Or it's, is it a little I, bit of both? I, oh, I do all my designs All now. your own designs? Yeah. But how I work, it depends. Sometimes I just uh, I draw schedule or whatever, but not, not so lately. I work pretty much from the references. I like it actually do it on the spot. So, for example, tattoo I did today, this girl, she came, she wanted to get a bird. I just need to know the name of the bird and then I just make it up. And that's it, right on the spot that, you that, it, that's, all I, that's all I need, yeah. So I will look for the reference for the bird, for example, kind of like what position I would like. And it also depends what part of body is it. And I just do my references. And if I see the person, I can, I get better feel. And that's how I do it. That's why I don't really prepare my stuff too much beforehand. So it's, for me, it's a lot above feel, actually. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do you listen to music while you're tattooing? Yeah, does I do. It, does, that, yeah. does that help? Oh, uh, I love music, so absolutely, but it's it, it's not something like my inspiration or nothing like that. I just love to listen to music, of course. What do course. you like for music? Um, okay, so for example, for tattooing, I like loungy. Sometimes I want to listen just rock. Sometimes I want to listen hip-hop, so it all depends on my mood. I'm, I'm actually listening to my music according to my mood. Yeah? Yeah. I, I like variety in my life, like everything, so I like lots of different things. Yeah. So how long have you been yeah. tattooing? I think it professionally. Could, um, professionally, maybe around, maybe around ten years, roughly. Yeah, maybe even more, ten, twelve years, something like that. So we've got mm. a question in from the folks that are watching. Mm. Uh, they'd like to know what your favorite places to tattoo. Uh, favorite places for arm. <laughs> I think they mean uh, location, uh -huh. as in uh, so part what of the world. Mean? Oh, what part of the world? Mm. It really depends because. I, for example, love to tattoo here. I love to tattoo in Los Angeles if I'm in Long Beach. Um, I love to tattoo in Birmingham. I enjoy tattooing in France, so it really depends. Do you know I, I, but every place, I must say, every place has different feel for me. But now I'm choosing the... If, for example, is it new place, then of course I never know. But especially I'm always coming back to places I, I feel very, like, for example, inspired or it has good feel for me. Because every shop is different, every energy is different. So do you think the client, mm. do you have, is there a difference in clientele from, uh, from country to country? No, not as such, I would say, because now pretty much uh, clients li uh, pre uh, give me free hand, so I can do whatever I like. As, uh, they can give me a little bit of the guidance, but they are uh, kind of open-minded, so I like it. It's good. They know my style, so that's probably what they're after, so it's easy. You know? That's great. Yeah. So I am, I say, I have really good clients. So. How long have you had mm. the freedom to be able to do that? Okay, it's, it's, it has changed maybe for the past... One, two years, to be honest. Is it, uh, yeah. So it's now I feel really satisfied because this is exactly what I always wanted to do. Like really just have my freedom if someone tells me what they want and they just leave it up to me. And then I feel I can really create it. I like to do corporation or maybe like a fusion from what my clients want and what I want. And just so somehow meet in between, but I will still, I will still do my thing. How have, you, how have you developed your international clientele? Have you, has it been by going to conventions or guest spots? Or mm, a little bit of I, I, was, or? I was traveling a lot, so maybe around seven years ago, I left 
I, I wanted to just travel around the world and meet different people, different cultures and places. And I met lots of, lots of people in between. Mm -hmm. So I started to do guest spots. Not, not as much conventions because I didn't like conventions, but mostly from the guest spots, I would say. What do you think the yeah. drawbacks of a convention is? What are, what are the problems with conventions? What don't you like about them? Uh, it's too Anybody many. Anybody who uh, promotes <laughs> conventions out there, you might want to listen up. Okay. Um, it's just too many people for me, so it's, it's actually a personal thing. It, it's nothing against the, for example, about the organization or the, the convention that I don't like it. That is not true. But it's just too many people, and for me, it's hard to focus. Too much or chaos. Too it's much too much chaos for me. Yeah. But, but now, lately, I'm starting to be a little bit better because I started to do, uh, do conventions more often, maybe like every two months or something, or, or the biggest conventions. So I'm, I am kind of get used to it, I think, if, if I'm like better prepared and trying to focus. Do you have any conventions coming up in the coming year? Uh, yes, I have uh, Ink and Iron in Long Beach, which is uh, in 8th of June, I think, I'm going to be there. And then I have uh, Tattoo Gatoring or Paradise. That is in September, yeah. and then all the I, I'm planning Avian, and then I have a tattoo convention in uh, Milano, uh, London tattoo convention in September, the international one, Nice and Paris. So that's far, a lot of conventions yeah. for someone who doesn't like conventions. Because I started to do it this year, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted this year to. You're I, making more of a push. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like consciously decided, like, okay, I have to do conventions because I have I have some some things I want to do for the future, so I have to actually just to put my name out there, and I want to have a if someone more wants international to get tattooed client. By you, mm -hmm. what's the best way to get in touch? Uh, the best way is just contact me on my email. What's your email address? Uh, it's toxic tattoo at hotmail .com. And they can find they can find all information on my uh, Facebook. Sure. At the and moment, you're on I, tattoo now as well. Right? Or tattoo now as yeah. well. Yeah. So both that is that is my email address. Yeah. You got any plans for mm. uh, a website in the future? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm actually uh, already working on it. So. All right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Mm. Excellent. Um, so stylistically, where do you mm. see yourself progressing? Is there a style that you wanted? that you want to mm. move on to? Are you happy with what you're doing right now? Or? Okay, now uh, now I kind of feel like I, I actually, in the process, I want to create something else. Because, okay, I'm, I'm, I need challenge, so if I feel with something, I, for example, start to do one thing, then I'm a little bit tattooing, and then I feel kind of like comfortable, that it's, that it's starting to be a little bit easy for me, and that is exactly the point where I have to move forward, and I, will, and I will make up something new. Yeah, and I'm, I'm in the stage right now that I'm already going to, to probably push myself some more again. So let's see what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, for someone that might be looking mm. to get tattooed, do you have any advice for someone on getting a good tattoo? How would they go about? How would someone go about getting a great tattoo? Okay, uh, most importantly, because those days people have such a great choice of artist. So I think that people have to do the research and probably just see what kind of style is suitable for them. You know, and uh, um, yeah, I, I mean they have to leave it then up to the artist because there has to be that trust. So if they like that style and they know it, that's exactly like kind of what they're looking for. Um, yeah, and the most important thing, I think they should think how big they want to go or how it should look on their body. Because lots of people want to get like a small tattoos and then they will contact the artist again. Okay, I want to extend and extend, but I believe like they should just get like really have the whole actually picture in their head first before they do something. I like, for example, uh, bigger pieces or like a large pieces. And it is just much easier if, even for the artist if, if the concept is already in the head and then we just follow the idea kind of, instead of like adding things or... Instead because of piece by piece. Piece by, by piece, piece by yeah. piece, because I think it's never gonna have the same flow and it's never gonna just be that nice, you know? Great, um, mm. so Guy Aitchison's calling us, so we're gonna be talking with him in just a minute. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back, and you can hang out with us and talk with Guy if you want okay. to, and uh, we'll talk with him and see what's going on with him. Stick with us. We're going to take a quick break.
Rock with Ivana a little bit yes. more. Uh, do you do anything outside of tattooing uh, to keep yourself artistically challenged? Or is you, do you just tattoo? I just tattoo. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No painting? No. I never painted actually, but I do draw for fun. I like that. Um, that's pretty much it. Photography? Yes. Okay, so photography uh, is my uh, okay. Photography is my other hobby. Probably after the, just after tattooing. Where do you draw inspiration from for your tattoos? Um, it's like everyday life, pretty much. You know, I don't know. I I just like everything around me, so I pay attention to little things or from my travels, especially. You know, that's why I like to travel. So constantly, I can I can have my mind stimulated. I would say. So I don't know. I just. If I travel, I, I can see the buildings, I can see the nature, I can see people or anything, and I get inspiration from it. Yeah. So you put out a book? Uh, yes. How long ago? Uh, the book is, I think it was about six months ago when I finished it, or, or maybe even more, roughly. Yeah. Can you and tell I'm, us a little bit about it? Um, yeah, the, the book is pretty much, uh, uh, there is some collection of my, of my work, of my tattoos, of my drawings. Uh, there is some... Uh, some blurbs. It's it's pretty much some some thoughts I had in my head, and there's a little bit about me. But it's 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 more in the funny way. It's done. It's very it's it's kind of like easy. It's called know? narcissistic and rockstar. Yes, narcissistic so rockstar. So why did you title the book narcissistic? <laughs> because rockstar? Because it's all about me. <laughs> it's all about you. <laughs> yeah, no one else. <laughs> <laughs> that makes total sense. <laughs> so do you find it hard traveling all the time? Is it a hard life? Um, no, I love it. You love it? Yeah, sometimes, you know, when I was do doing too many guest posts, then literally I just, I just flew home, I put my, uh, I, I did my laundry, and in two days I was flying somewhere, or maybe next day, so that was a little bit too much, but I don't know, I just enjoying it. I really, really like it, you know. So where's home? Uh, now is home, Slovakia. <laughs> but uh, with me, it's a little bit, uh, some people ask me many times, like, where do you live? And uh, my answer is, I live everywhere. I don't, you know, I don't really know, like, everywhere I feel, everywhere I feel good. Do you have a shop yeah. at home? Uh, no. No place to work? No, 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 no. I, I can work at home if I want to, but I, you just know. Just travel? Yeah. I was working in one shop with my friends, so yeah, I can, I can tattoo everywhere pretty much. Great. Yeah. Cool. Hey, how are we doing with the guys' uh, connection in there, gentlemen? He's, he's going to give a call. Okay. All right. So we're going to try Guy back. Um, thanks, Ivana, for talking no with us a little bit more. And we might talk with you some more. Hey, Guy, I can hear you, and everything sounds okay. You can hear me, all right. Yeah. Hey, everyone, thanks for hanging around through all of our uh, technical difficulties here. Yeah, Mercury um, must be in retrograde. Oh, is that uh, Ivana's work there? That grenade? Yes, that, that, that was. It's uh, pretty amazing stuff. Hey there, I've seen a little bit of your work. Um, really, really stunning. Can you hear him? Oh, a little bit, thank you. <laughs> so, Guy, what's new? Oh gosh, what's new? Um, well, on the, the home front, uh, we're working on growing tomatoes. But uh, <laughs> as far as uh, everything else uh, at uh, uh, Tattoo Education, we, we're rolling out a bunch of new stuff. Um, over this, this past week and this coming week, uh, a few different books and DVDs. And I've been preparing for this uh, seminar coming up in Boston. Um, so that's that's been the professional end of things. Uh, just got over a really uh, challenging couple of days of tattooing yesterday and the day before. A piece that uh, I kind of took on as a deliberate challenge. I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to send you photos of it. Um, what? A, how large? How large of a piece? It was a half sleeve. Um, it was the complexity of it that that really uh, uh, kind of threw me. Um, <laughs> I don't know. If this will show very well on the camera. Um, you know, one of these light form kind of oh, yeah. thingies with uh, atmospherics and organic stuff and uh, that kind of thing. Oh, man. But, you know, just a lot of really delicate tolerances there, you know, trying to, to go for this um, very careful balance between being bold and strong enough uh, but also being the soft and atmospheric piece. And then on the inside, now this might really not show up on the camera, but uh, this is a kind of lunar mandala oh, yeah. kind of thing. It totally shows put up. Put together uh, with this, this eye kind of superimposed over it. And 
Yeah, and, and here, imagine a bunch of kind of geometric stuff around the outside of it and uh, a starry night sky behind that. So, you know, we're, we're laying three different effects over each other. You've got the starry night sky, you've got this uh, geometric mandala thing going around it, and you've got this uh, uh, eye superimposed over it. So, um, yeah, that was, that was kind of micro-anal sort of stuff, but I, I really enjoyed doing it. Um, I can't wait to see somebody's first tattoo. First tattoo? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, somebody's first tattoo. I'm really sorry. You know, maybe I should just text this to you right now as we're talking. Let's see if I can do this without disrupting our conversation and uh, uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, um, I, we've we've got a we're gonna talk. We've about. got a few questions in from the chat room. Um, if you okay, uh, let's hear those questions. All right, cool. Um, someone wants to know, um, with copying being the uh, sincerest form of flattery, how how do you feel about so many people? Uh, they use the term knocking off your style, but uh, being influenced by your work. Oh, um, I think it depends on how much they try to push it in their own direction. I think that's really the important thing uh, with all of it. It's uh, uh, a matter of originality, and I think what I'm doing is is not um, my own thing. Biomet was around before me. I've got my own spin on it. Uh, H.R. Giger, obviously he was sort of the uh, originator of a lot of this stuff. He's uh, definitely got his own look that, that uh, all of us sort of uh, ganked on a little bit. Um, now that piece there, that's something that I did with Don McDonald, a collaborative piece. Um, and uh, Don is influenced by both me and by uh, Aaron Kane. Uh, and Aaron and I kind of are, are two different distinct points in the abstract tattoo spectrum. Um, but there's a whole lot of this uh, you know, range of, of style to still be explored that nobody's done yet. And uh, a lot of artists who are really pushing the limits right now with it are uh, kind of touching on some, uh, you know, territory that I wouldn't have thought to or that Aaron King wouldn't have thought to, to do uh, anything with. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that as long as people are taking it in their own direction uh, enough, you know, as long as they're putting enough uh, originality into it, then I'm all for it, you know. I mean, uh, I don't own this style. I don't. Uh, I don't want people to think that it's, a style that's closed off because there's a couple of people doing it already, you know, I mean, it's kind of like Japanese tattooing. You can, um, you know, do it a million different ways. I mean, every artist that, that does a good job with Japanese tattooing has their own look with it, but it's kind of this accepted set of, of motifs and elements that, you know, need to be put together in a way that flows nicely and looks good on the body. Uh, and, you know, Biomech has the potential to have that sort of universal kind of applicability, you know, where uh, any artist could sit down with it and do their thing with it. Um, so, you know, right now there's kind of this, uh, this challenge, I guess, to um, break through this perception of um, tattoo, uh, of biomech tattooing belonging to a couple of particular artists, most notably myself and Aaron King. Uh, so... I would really personally love to see that perception change radically, and then we would see the range of biomech style out there change radically. I think it would, uh, it would be a kind of a abstract tattoo renaissance. Uh, but first, we have to get over this perception that it's a style that belongs to particular artists because it isn't. You know, of course, my style of biomech belongs to me. And um, please don't rip it off. If you don't mind. <laughs> That's a very clear point. I think I think that made your point. Uh, in turn, do you see uh, newer artists that may be inspired uh, inspired by your work, and do you see think elements in their work that in turn inspires you back? That's something that you might not have tried. Um, I I steal from much younger artists all the time. I'm sorry if I'm, everyone if I'm looking at my phone, I'm trying to send you. This it's totally cool. Right now. Okay, I just sent a picture. I just sent it to tattoo now at tattoonow.com. We should get that momentarily. And later, maybe I'll try to send the, uh, um, the lunar part of it, but uh, I don't want to keep looking at my <laughs> phone and talking to you. Um, where were we? I'm sorry. Uh, just, uh, you, you were just saying how you, uh, you rip off all kinds of younger artists. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
some of you may be familiar with the Biomechanics Encyclopedia project that I've been working on. Um, now, there have been about 30 other artists involved in this as well, and we've done a lot of collaborating uh, online uh, in some cases and in person in, in a minority of the cases, but most of this stuff was passed back and forth using a private Flickr account. And, uh, everyone kind of just did their own thing with it and then reposted it and let the next artist do their own thing with it. And since we all had kind of a common sense of where we wanted to go with these and uh, we all had this similar understanding of the basic rules of how to not make mud out of it, uh, all these designs turned out killer. I mean, it's, it's really a, a, an amazing selection of, of different Biomech designs, many of them are, are sleeves or can be chopped up and used, however, but uh, were designed as sleeves. And there's hundreds and hundreds of them, I mean, literally, like 400 of these drawings. So um, that's all different mishmashes of different people's take on Biomech tattooing. There's, there's a, a, a range of, of styles there that doesn't belong to any one person because it was um, brought together from the, the fusion of different uh, throwing in their, uh, their take on it. And so this is stuff that artists who are just wanting to learn to explore biomech tattooing and don't want to rip off some other artist, they can kind of start with this material. Um, and then I would encourage them to you know, take bits and pieces from different designs, mix and match, do their own thing with it. Uh, there's also a, a good long section uh, just on theory, how to make good biomech design, how to not make uh, mud or you know that third degree burn look uh, that just doesn't look like anything from a distance, um, which you see in a lot of bad biomech. There's plenty of bad biomech walking around. That's one of the things that's uh, always worked against it. Is uh, I think people get this um, this kind of false perception that it's easy because. You don't have to get, like, let's say it's a human figure or a face, you have to get the proportions right. You have to, you know, shade it and, you know, uh, have features wrap around it as it curves away and that kind of thing in a way that at least makes sense. If it's not actually realistic, but at least it has to make sense. Uh, so there's this perception that biomech being abstract is kind of a vacation from that, and it's just not. Um, the opposite is sort of true because you don't have recognizable things in it, you know, skulls or whatever that instantly appeal to people. Uh, you have to work a little bit harder to make it really visually stunning. Uh, you kind of have additional challenges, and on top of that, you still have to make it flow nicely with, uh, with the body. You still need to get good contrast uh, so it reads clearly from a distance. You still want to have it uh, be a, um, you know, an overall look and feel that is appropriate for the person wearing it. You get all those normal challenges, but on top of that, you don't have any kind of, uh, you know, simple and easy um, features in the piece that, that will instantly appeal. You know, you have to get people's attention just with good, straight-up design and execution skills. I've also found that uh, the best biomech tattooing tends to be fairly um, rendering intensive. I mean, it's, it's kind of a style that... Uh, invites um, just really going for it with the rendering and doing a lot with uh, you know shading and texture and highlighting and uh, things that you might not think to do with let's say a tattoo of a horse or something um, so hey uh, you know this cat is driving me nuts I'm sorry if you yeah that's story. what I was wondering I was, I was wondering what that noise was it's your cat huh it's funny this this will be the second cat that's joined the, uh, the second cat that's joined the show in uh, in as many shows as we've had uh, okay. Jeff Gogway's cat. Jeff Gogway's cat also joined the show at one point, so uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a running theme. Those frisky feet. <laughs> hey, uh, I've got, I got, I got, right. I have well, a couple more questions uh, for you from the chat room. Okay. Um, right. Someone wants to know about ergonomics, uh, as far as how do you prevent strain and stress? You've been tattooing for a really long time. Uh, how do you avoid things like carpal tunnel and back strain, that kind of thing? Or do you avoid it at all? Well, okay, I do, uh, and I've had a history of uh, having to, you know, take those issues seriously. Uh, periods of time where I was afraid that I might be seeing a limitation to the length of my career because it had gotten so bad. 
Um, the biggest thing that made a difference was just being more reasonable in the hours that I work. And a lot of people are like, but man, I'm trying to build my portfolio and I got to make the money, got to bring home the bacon. And all those things are true. You do have to find that balance. But part of that is ultimately about, um, you know, just not overworking yourself. Uh, an eight hour day of, of solid tattooing, that's a lot of tattooing. Um, <laughs> I can't believe this is this is a different cat. Right? <laughs> uh, are you really stuck and you just can't get off with my elbow? Uh, it's totally fine, guys. The problem with cats is they've got hooks on them that they just yeah. There you go. All right. Let's hope this isn't an ongoing motif. Here. I kind of li- I kind of um, like the uh, I like the comedy relief of it all. It's good. It's, it's, like, it's good. We're gonna add more cats to the shows later. It's gonna be a feature. Tattooers and their cats. We need dogs. <laughs> um, we need dogs to barge on, <laughs> eat the microphone or whatever. <laughs> Just, I have to talk into the bare rear end of the dog. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. So you're going to be at the Worldwide Tattoo Conference um, coming yes. up in June? Yes. Uh, I'm psyched about it. Um, you know, the last uh, conference, was, first of all, I thought it was a neat event just being such hardcore concentrated classes, you know, it was just that. And, um, you know, people were very, I, I think part of part of what happens in that kind of a, a setup is people get very open and right? they just kind of open up. They're like, all right, I'm just going to, um, you know, put all my, all my defenses aside. You know, I'm here, I'm here to learn and I'm just going to listen. And I think that a lot of them, um, as they're, they're listening, you know, with the, these long, but very, you know, each class being very different and very focused on a particular aspect of design or whatever, um, that, uh, you know, you're hearing this stuff and you're thinking about how you do things and sort of putting it side by side with it. Um, and it's hard not to go home with at least a sense of, okay, here's my list of five things to uh, upgrade right now, you know, or here's my five equipment things and my five technique things that I'm going to try to, you know, work on this month right away. Um, so this time through, you know, the, the one piece of feedback that I got about the, the last conference was uh, a couple of artists uh, wished that there had been a little bit more technical stuff. I think that um, the overarching theme of it was all very inspirational and about visualization and about focusing yourself and your career and uh, not burning yourself out, and um, I think there were even some discussions on business ends of things. Uh, so this time I'm getting very, very technical. I'm going to focus on um, well, the the title of my seminar is tightening, and that's a lot of different things. It's not that's not any one technique. That's kind of more of a, really a philosophy about uh, how you tattoo and thinking not in terms of uh, here are my three processes. First I line, here I shade, here I color, you know, I change machines at this particular point, and then I'm done. You know, but instead to think in terms of what does the design need at this particular uh, junction, you know, and uh, there's a lot more switching back and forth between machines, but you're able to uh, you know, create a look that uh, you're not going to get through some kind of procedural approach to it. Uh, instead, it's kind of like you're throwing yourself at the tattoo and and just using all the different things you have at your disposal in whatever order you need to um, in, in such a way that the piece comes together, I think, a lot more like a, a drawing or painting, but still done in such a way that, that you know has the idea of being a tattoo in mind. It's just that you're not limited by the, the kind of technical things you'll normally see with the you know, very basic approach where you just outline and then shade and then color. You know, with a tattoo like that, for instance, you might see all these little gaps between where the shading ends and where the outline is, where you, know, you really want to bring that shading right up against the outline, get that very solid look, but at the same time, uh, there's only so much you can do with a magnum without risking running over it, which of course looks terrible. It's better to fall a little shy. Uh, so, you know, I've got methods for dealing with little things like that, and I've got a couple of different tattoos that I'm going to be showing close-up video footage from. Uh, one of them is Dirk Morrison's knee, 
And I'm not showing the whole process, I'm just showing particular stages of what I'm doing. And in fact, Derb's knee isn't actually technically finished um, at this point, but it's still a real good demonstration. The other one is the piece I just emailed you, which I don't know if that would be uh, an opportunity to pop that up on the screen. Um, I think, uh, I think but it's a piece where I had a, a wide variety of different um, uh, elements in it. We had some things that were um, strong, you know, black outlines around them to really pop them into the foreground, make them very graphic. We had other elements that were uh, meant to be jewel-like and were done in such a way that uh, um, a heavy outline would have really made as much sense. And we had things like uh, clouds and light rays and atmospheric effects that, you know, again, you still want to make it strong enough to be a tattoo. You, you want to give it movement from a distance and not just have it be a mishmash of formless color and shade. Uh, and so, in, even in parts of the design like that, you've got work that was done with a nine round and that kind of thing. You know, the, uh, the method uh, actually applying this tattoo uh, involved going all over the place. Um, and eventually, when you guys have got it up on the screen, we can kind of go back to it. Yeah, I, for, um, I, just, I just talked to Matt in the back room, and uh, he hasn't gotten that email, so uh, we'll, we'll try to get that. Oh, hey, can you... You know what? I, I might be looking at a send failure here. Uh, Can I what? Uh, you just said, can you? What's that? You just said, can you? Oh, uh, yeah. Can you uh, can you stick with us? We're going to look at some of the uh, tattoo of the day. Yeah, yeah, the tattoo of the yeah. day. Yeah, I'd, I'd I think we're going to go through some of those, and that, that'll, give Matt, that'll give Matt a chance to uh, see if that email comes up, and then if he gets that image, we can look at it after. So I'm just going to send it again right now, and... Uh, I'm going to send both of these. One of them is the, the moon thing, and one of them is the outside of the earth. And it's tattoo now at tattoonow.com, yes. right? Okay. All right, so the folks that are watching that, that uh, don't know what the tattoo of the day is, it's uh, artists that are members of tattoonow.com submit uh, their current works, and they get voted on by the members of Tattoo Now. And if you have the app, which you can get on the uh, Apple App Store, you can vote on them now too through the app, and you can follow along with the uh, tattoos of the day. So, the tattoos that get voted best every day, we compile and then put them all together and put them on the show for you bi weekly. And uh, we're going to take a look at them right now. And Ivana, if you want to uh, look at these tattoos and you know, okay. know some of the highlights of them that you think are mm -hmm. great, uh, Ivana's been on. She's one tattoo of the day more than just about anyone uh, in the history of Tattoo Now. Ironically, not this week, but uh, <laughs> most past weeks you can see her work in there because she's in there all the time. Uh, so we'll just take a look at those and uh, you guys can follow along on the app. So this is by Johnny Smith, uh, the newest resident at Off the Map Northeast here in East Hampton. Uh, Johnny Smith can tattoo as long as you can sit, so if you want a big one, call Johnny. I've been digging on how Johnny's been doing a lot of the painterly kind of like watercolor stuff. This is uh, Adam Orcella, uh, traditional tattoo guy. He does very solid, solid traditional tattoos. He's got a shop in uh, upstate New York. Uh, this is by London. Uh, for those of you who follow any of the tattoo television shows, the ones that are actually on television, uh, he was the winner of Best Ink, uh, season one. That's really nice. I like how I get the individual feathers on the. Hey, I know who did this one. This is uh, this is one of Guy's pieces. How did this get snuck into Tattoo of the Day? You must... That wasn't done in the day. No, uh, it, it's whatever the, the tattoos that are up... It took two days. The tattoos, <laughs> yeah, two days. <laughs> it's the tattoos that get uploaded that day, so... Uh, how long did this piece take, Guy? Um, that was six decent sessions, probably six to eight hours each. So, um, 40, 45 hours. And it's done? Oh, in your mind? Good. Is it finished? Uh, we're gonna give it a couple years to settle and and then see if it needs anything else. It's 
badass. Then there's that neck piece, which is already there, and, and that, that kind of that, made it take a little bit less time. Like the piece that, that he did on me in exchange, that's Don McDonald's. Right. Uh, piece he did on me took upwards of 60 hours. Well, still working on that one? Um, it's, I guess we probably are going to work on it more. But it could be presented as finished right now. Uh, so this is uh, Megan Jean. She uploaded this on Mother's Day, which is a nice coincidence. Very accurate, yeah. This is a, this is a great portrait. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> that's cool. I like the vibrant blues. This is Conan. He's going to be visiting the shop soon, too. He's coming up for the uh, Master's Illustrators program. That's a lot of nuclear colors. Yeah. <laughs> so good. He'll be doing a guest spot up here at the shop. It's really nice. I'm a big Cicada fan. Like how he did the uh, Paisley stuff in the wings. Kind of overall, kind of alien ornament approach to the body. This is Brian Geckel. Uh, obviously, he uh, he has he draws his inspiration from uh, similar places as you, guy. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've tattooed Geckel quite a bit too. Looks like he's got a little bit of cover up in there. Not bad, but the cover-up area could use a little more texture. That's how you hide that stuff. Jamie Parker looks like a little. Uh, it's really nice. Sea monster kind of thing. Like the billowy effect in the sails. Canman, who was just on our show uh, two weeks ago, this is one of his new ones. They stay there, bro. It's Jeff Gogway. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's a big one. I didn't see this one. Yeah, it's really nice. Right What's that? I didn't see this one. It's really nice. Mm. I like how his organic stuff that he does in the in his bone texture sort of borders on being almost ornamental. You know, it's almost a filigree approach to. Uh, yeah, it's sort of a wood grain bone texture. It's really a really a neat blend of different styles. It's certainly his thing. Like to breathe. That one looks like a hurt. Nice. It's rare to see him step out of the realism uh, sort of a uh, thing, but that's that's great. It's really neat applying the realism to a more stylized tattoo. Tony Adamson, uh, glowing little tiger cub here, lion cub. This is a, a good time for me to mention that we've got uh, a charity event coming up. Uh, tattoos for endangered species, is that right? Gentlemen in the back? Yes. Mm. That'll be coming up sometime in November, I think. Hey, it's me. <laughs> so, uh, those are the tattoos of the day. Uh, we're still working on getting Guy's uh, image. I'm not sure what's up with that. So it never showed up? Uh, I haven't no. seen it. I sent both of them this time. Okay. Uh, uh, we're well, going to take it. I guess if it hasn't showed up by yeah, now, they, I don't they, know. They, they showed up. It's just getting into the right computer at the right time. Yeah, we're just, we're just trying to transfer them from one okay. to the other. Right. Uh, we're going to take, a, well, we're take right. a quick break. And we know they're actually on. <laughs> we're going to look at uh, the new Dark Water video shot by Richie Bulldog, and then we'll be right back. I'm Jose Perez Jr. I was born in Chicago and I own dark water tattoos on the south side. When I was 11, my parents decided it was a great idea to move to Mexico, take the whole family. 
They sold everything and said we were going on a vacation. And we never just never came back. <laughs> I lived in a small town and everybody was, you know, dirt poor, but very humble, you know. And something I wanted to do is like go to school, you know, over there and I didn't have the means to do it. I didn't have the means to go to college over there, you know, and I was like I wanted to better myself, you know, and and not be in that situation anymore, you know, because it came, sometimes I had a hustle, you know, whatever, door to door, or some fruit, we used to, me and my sister used to cut down, and, and we used to hustle door to door just to make, you know, make some money to eat tonight, you know, feed the family. Yeah, that's where it all comes from, you know, it just molded who I am, and, and in Mexico is where I actually picked up my first, my first needle, you know, actually made my first needle. <laughs> How did you sterilize shit? How we did it was just with a, a lighter, man. <laughs> you know, we were kids. You know, I was like, uh, I was at 16 when I first picked up uh, one of my blue leg uh, tattoo machines. <laughs> my friends, um, he got a hold of like this prison art magazine. I just remembered <laughs> prison art magazine that had like, these killer, just raw uh, tattoos. You know, in prison. And, we were kids, we were like, oh, that's badass, you know, I want to do that, let's get one. <laughs> and yeah, man, I can, I did a couple on myself, I might show you guys in the future, <laughs> but uh, black and gray realism, textures, um, I get down and dirty with blacks of blacks, lights of lights, I get all the detail, I take my time, I put my heart and soul into everything I do, I just make sure that I really get really intricate with all the, all the textures, details. You know, the things that your average artist doesn't really look into or stop to actually accentuate. I would just love for people to see my stuff to just understand what took to get there, to, what went into that piece. You know, it wasn't just a piece, let me whip it out just because I want to. No, it was because I really give a shit and I care and, and I want people to see that in my pieces, man. You know? I would like them to see the passion and dedication and attention to detail. You know, I think that's what sets me apart, the textures. You know, I take my time and do all the little tiny little things that a lot of people tend to bypass. And to me, it's, uh, it's the hard thing to do and therefore I take on the task to do it. I was told early on that uh, I wouldn't make it too far in the tattoo industry because I didn't really have an artistic background. I put in a lot of sacrifice, you know, a lot of just everything that I have to give, you know, it's just a lot of passion. I'm okay, hey guy, we got your image. All right. Fabulous. So uh, we're going to bring it up and you can uh, tell us a little bit about it and then after that we'll be wrapping up. I'll uh, talk a little bit about what's going on with Tattoo Now and what we've got coming up in our next show. But for now, this is uh, the brand new piece that Guy just did. Yeah, which I don't know if this would really technically uh, be an upload since I would like to uh, you know, lay out a few different views of this um, so people can see the front and back. But you can see we've got this kind of organic filigree sort of stuff. Um, towards the bottom that uh, actually in the back goes all the way up to the top. You can just barely see a little bit of it up there to the right. Oh yeah, um, it's, it's almost like and then, vines. Uh, right, and that stuff has all got you know the hard outlines to pop into the foreground and then uh, we've got the atmospheric effects, the backlit clouds and then, you know, I gave them you know, plenty of strong uh, contrast, nice dark colors in there and try to make them flow in a really clearly uh, kind of flowing, spiraling kind of manner. And then, you know, through some light rays in there, uh, which can be a challenging effect to pull off, uh, especially on this part of the arm where uh, if you're not real careful, uh, especially over the top of the arm, it can look like they're just going willy-nilly in every direction. So, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time stenciling and redrawing parts of this uh, before it was right. That was actually a big part of the challenge was just getting just the right fit, just the right size. And uh, actually, we did the stencil uh, uh, before we even started because uh, it's just 5% too big. Um, did, did you do all... But, yeah, this is... This is
Oh, uh, did you just did you work just from that drawing that you showed us? Did you do any kind of Photoshop compositing or anything like that when you were doing this layout? No, there there was no there was no Photoshop in this one. The other the inside part, uh, I, I did some drawing in Photoshop, but this one was just old fashioned drawing and redrawing and redrawing. And you know, I used Photoshop in the sense that as the drawing was developing, uh, there were a couple times that I scanned it and whited out areas of it and reprinted it so that I could uh, you know, make changes to it without committing to actually erasing um, things from the, the original drawing, which I wasn't sure if the new direction would necessarily be better. So I did use Photoshop to that extent. I mean, it, it gets used for a lot of things, you know, even, even little jobs like that. I'm, I'm very digital dependent, but I still really like to do old-fashioned you know, drawing with pencil what, when I can. You know, this is this is a piece. What was the most challenge? Really what was the most challenging part of doing this tattoo? And uh, when you come into a challenge like that, how do you overcome it? Well, a lot of it is just being methodical. You know, the the big challenges in this were we had all these effects, and um, it, it it meant having to kind of go into it very gradually, uh, not necessarily put down a strong outline for each element, but instead some things need to be shaded in, some things needed to be uh, outlined with color, uh, some things with black, and so, you know, there, there's a, you know, I kind of think like an inkjet printer sometimes when doing something like this, and I'll start at the bottom and very slowly scan my way up, uh, switching machines every few minutes, um, and by the time I get to the top, you've got something that's way more than an outline, it's, it's kind of a you know, a light impression of all the uh, darker and cooler colors in the piece with, you know, maybe not as much contrast as it's going to have towards the very end, just kind of a light first pass, but all very precise. I'm trying to get that first pass as clean and to uh, keep all the information of the stencil plus some. So that that's really my approach to to dealing with, you know, you've got multiple effects and things like that you're trying to apply. As long as you're methodical and, and you use the right machine for each part of the job, um, you're, uh, you're golden. The other thing is you just have to understand your design. You have to have a good mental grip of this thing that you're about to tattoo. If you're trying to do these effects, you need to know, okay, this ray is going to be transparent, and so I'm going to uh, ha have a break uh, here and here where the background disappears completely and then an area here where it gets a little bit lighter but it's still visible and I'm going to do that in each ray except the rays that go behind other rays in which case they're going to grade out out from that one line and you know what I mean you, you need to have all this stuff worked out you, you don't want to just go in there and, and uh, try to pull off these effects with just a basic idea of okay I want these to be rays because you might make a mess you, you really need to know ahead of time and so the drawing I was showing you earlier uh, it was very resolved. I mean, it wasn't a line drawing. And in fact, for me, it wouldn't make sense to do this as a line drawing because, for instance, which rays are dark and which are light? You know, where did the shading go? If it was just lines, uh, you wouldn't know that. Uh, same thing with uh, a lot of the atmospheric effects. Uh, I like to sort of shade those in uh, in my stencils. I use crosshatch shading uh, in, in my stencils so that it's not uh, a big blurry mess, but it still has. Uh, the, the dark and light area is sort of uh, you know, at least suggested in there. Because a lot of this stuff I'm putting in with a magnum as I go. I'm not just putting down an outline. Uh, so anyway, this is the piece I'm going to be using as my example in the upcoming seminar. Uh, and uh, you know, I've got clips of each part of the process. And I'll be explaining and answering questions about it. Uh, I've got a couple, three hours to go into a lot of detail uh, about all this stuff. So, uh, yeah, if anybody's got any questions about, uh, you know, pulling off all these different effects. I mean, I can't promise you that uh, you'll be able to do a tattoo like that after uh, taking the seminar. Uh, but I'm hoping that whatever it is you're already doing, you can get 10% cleaner and tighter. Uh, or if, for instance, you're going to have some elements in it that are uh, not going to have a black outline, that you have ways of making it strong enough and distinct enough. Uh, to uh, compensate for that fact. Do you, did you get the other uh, image, the the lunar looking thing? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Um, no, <laughs> we did not. Oh.
Okay. But uh, hey, well, thanks, thanks for being with us uh, this time and uh, giving us a little preview of what people can expect at the Worldwide Tattoo Conference. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me, and uh, for those who tuned in, um, I, I hope this was interesting and informative. I hope some of you can make it to this this upcoming class. For those who can't, um, there's uh, going to be more and more uh, of these online seminars. You know, there's a, a webinar that that uh, I did with Tattoo Now earlier this year. I actually tattooed Ben here. Um, and uh, a lot of people felt that it was as good, if not better, than being there in person. Now, the, the people who tuned in uh, were actually able to submit questions via the chat, and uh, Ben was reading me the questions as I was tattooing. So uh, this allowed everybody to really get a very inside look. And of course, the camera was right over my shoulder with you know very uh, bright, clear lighting and everything. So you could actually see the needle hitting. Uh, tattoo being done in real time, me explaining uh, everything the best I could and answering questions. Uh, we also had a camera on the palette uh, so you could see uh, what kind of dipping and sloshing around in the rinse cup and that kind of thing I'm doing to get each of these colors. Uh, we had a little palette, you know, thumbnail off in the corner. Uh, that one went down really well and uh, I fully intend to do more of those. So, you know, let's just say uh, you're in Bangladesh and just had no hope of getting over here for a uh, a worldwide tattoo conference for the next few years. Um, you know, tune in. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be doing at least a couple of those every year. Yeah. Uh, thanks for mentioning the webinars. Uh, we actually have one coming up soon in July. We're doing one with Russ Abbott, and people can. Uh, oh, nice. So people will be able to get some of his insight into what he does. Um, yeah, Russ, Russ's DVD is one of our, our, you know, really steady selling items. People uh, are very interested to hear what he has to say about. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's one of those people that combines different looks very successfully, you know, bringing the traditional and realism and, uh, you know, more stylized elements together in, in a way that reads very nicely as a tattoo and has that thought process behind it of, let's make this thing last. Uh, and then you asked earlier about other things. Yeah, another uh, DVD we've got that really is, is uh, worth taking a look at, a new item, uh, is the Nate Beaver's Fantasy Portrait uh, DVD. I was impressed by the way this thing is edited. They took out every chunk of time where the needle isn't actually in the skin. And that might sound strange, but when you see it, it's very, very smooth, and you can really see all the most important parts of the uh, the tattoo being done with all, all that wasted time in between. So it's whatever, a four or five hour tattoo that's down to a DVD length. And you know his approach is in some ways sort of parallel to Russ's, where he's combining a few different looks. and. Uh, has a really uh, you know strong eye towards trying to make something that's a, a strong, uh, you know, clear, easy to read, lasting tattoo. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to go on and on about DVDs and stuff. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, tuning in, and uh, I hope to see some of you next month in Boston. Uh, thanks a lot, guy. It's always a pleasure talking with you. Right on, Ben. Cheers. Bye. All right, everybody. That was Guy Ipsen. Uh Always informative. The guy's great. Uh, if you want more information about what he was talking about, you can go to uh, tattooeducation.com and all those DVDs that he was talking about are there. Uh, webinars, you can go to tattoonow.com. Uh, the whole professional development series is there. Um, speaking of Tattoo Now, I just want to give you a little bit of an update of what we've been up to. Uh, we've been doing this show. Uh, we've got a uh, worldwide tattoo conference coming up. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. Max3D uh, is a company that's been shooting tattoos in, with 360-degree uh, cameras, and we'll be showing some of that kind of stuff. Uh, Max from Off the Map, right over here in East Hampton, uh, has a piece that you're going to be able to see. It should be pretty cool. Uh, our next show, we're going to have, oh, I missed this, Chuck Day's mural. Uh, Chuck Day. Anyway. Our next show, we've got Mike Cole, uh, we've got Bob Tyrell, one of my personal favorites. Uh, we've got a mystery guest or two. Uh, our next show is June 2nd. Um, before the show, Johnny Smith from Off the Map Northeast is going to be doing a free uh, webinar for tattoo artist members of Tattoo Now. Uh, if you're not a member and you're an artist and you want to check this out, go sign up. Um, then we'll do the show with uh, Michael, Bob Tyrell, and uh, the aforementioned mystery guests. And then we're going to head back over to Luthier's Co-op for some live music with Matt Hebert, 
uh, from Austin, Texas, a uh, local native, local here, moved to Austin to make it big in the music business, he's doing great, and we're going to check out some of his, uh, his live stuff. All right, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, at the end of the show, you'll be able to see uh, we have Off the Map offers a How to Get the Perfect Tattoo, and uh, we'll leave the, uh, the address will be there at the end of, our, uh, end of the show. You should check it out uh, if you're curious about getting tattooed. It's definitely a good handbook to uh, how to great, get a great tattoo. Thanks, Ivana, for being with us. Thank you for having me. It was nice talking with you. You too. And uh, we'll see you guys next time, uh, June 2nd. Uh, then we're going to take a little break. Uh, we're going to get a Kickstarter together, uh, take a little Father's Day break. Hopefully we can get some money together and make a better show for you in the future. Thank you for watching. Uh, thanks to the chat room, uh, the man who mentioned using the phone. That was a great fix, man. Uh, you kind of saved our bacon on that one. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you at the next show, June 2nd. so different to any other convention. It's really, really cool. Yeah. <laughs> All the shows I've been to, this one is definitely different. And uh, to see uh, the collective artists, you know, at the top of the industry, you know, all in the same building has been a really great experience for me and I'm sure for everybody that has attended this year. because it's purely about the art. So people come here and, they, and everyone wants to share. It's so open, like everyone wants to share and see everyone else progress. It's, a, it's main focus is the art and the artists and the education. This type of stuff is what, you know, makes me feel like I'm on the right path and like helps me stay focused and inspired. This is something different. Uh, every year it's been the same. It's, it feels better every time it seems. You know, amazing artists, amazing just atmosphere. Almost a bit of a pain to have to work. The Paradise Tattoo Gathering is, is significantly different from many other conventions, uh, solely, solely because it deals with the uh, quality over quantity aspect. Many conventions are just a bunch of tattooers in a large room doing tattoos. Um, so this offers a lot more learning potential and other artists can show up if they're not working the show and take lots of seminars and it's like a little mini learning vacation for them. I've done so many seminars this weekend it's hard to put a finger on. Um, I've been inspired in so many ways, like spiritually, um, artistically, even like the approach that you have to your clients, to your work. Um, things like that. I think it's been um, it's been inspiring in a, in a whole, not in one way. Um, I couldn't even sleep last night. My brain was racing so much. It's great to see the people that are at the top of the tattoo mountain willing to share that information, as opposed to you know treating every aspect in life as a game to climb over everyone else and just stay up lonely at the top. Um, there's no sense of that here at the show. It's helping to, you know, increase the visibility of, you know, tattooing, you know, around the world and, you know, just helping, you know, everybody at least to, you know, participate, you know, to get better. I would say that, um, always, always got home inspired after this kind of, after this particular convention. 
I think this convention definitely has an effect on the industry and I think it already has changed the industry just in the few years that it's been happening. 